Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Adam Moose, and today in this series called In Depth, I'm going to be breaking down everything that you need to know about Zack Jungle. I'm done being nice. Zack is an engaged tank that has a very unique and fun playstyle. He's been in the meta for years, and is very different than pretty much every other tank champion in the game. If you enjoy the content, it really helps me out if you could leave a like and comment on the video to help your boy out with the YouTube algorithm. If you want to talk with me and other members in the community that are looking to improve, be sure to join the Discord link that's in the description. Hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Abilities. Let's jump right into Zack's kit and how to really make use of all his abilities correctly. Zack's passive is called Cell Division. Passively, Zack gains increased size equal to 1.5% of his bonus health, and this caps at 35% when at 2,333 health. Zack's size also reduces based on his missing health, down to 70% total size when at 1% health. This is a pretty funny mechanic that actually does have a use. In late game fights, when you have a ton of health, you can actually act as a skill shot blocking wall for your team. This can be great in small choke points to deny any crucial skill shots from hitting your carries that are in the backline. When you're low in health, this has the inverse effect where you become harder to hit, so it's easier for you to dodge. To build on top of Zack's passive, every time he hits at least one enemy with an ability, he sheds a number of chunks of himself to a nearby location. These blobs last 6 seconds and can be consumed by Zack to heal himself, or enemy champions can walk over them to destroy them. Although Zack does not use mana, his abilities cost a portion of his health, meaning that managing your blobs correctly is crucial to really master Zack. This mechanic is at the core of Zack's kit, and allows him to get some serious sustain in the jungle and in fights. Picking up your chunks in between autos and abilities will really keep your health topped up in scenarios where you really need it. It's important to note that sometimes your blobs can actually be a bait, so keep this in mind since walking into danger to get a single blob is definitely not worth it. And lastly for Zack's passive, upon taking fatal damage, Zack starts resurrecting and restores 50% of his health, splitting into 4 blobs. These bloblets are uncontrollable and move towards Zack's location. Enemies can damage these blobs, and if all of them are killed, the resurrection ends and Zack dies. If any of them remain alive after the duration, Zack is revived and can continue fighting, while this passive goes on a long cooldown. This is a very interesting tool that can be used in multiple ways throughout a game. A good example would be full on engaging, baiting enemies to try and kill you, getting follow up from your team, and then casually reviving. This can also be very useful in late game teamfights, since you're already extremely tanky in the first place, so once you die, the enemies need to commit even more damage to your blobs to actually get rid of you for good. Allies can also teleport onto your blobs, which makes them untargetable. This can be an extremely clutch mechanic to guarantee that you respawn in those close call moments. Zack's Q is called Stretching Strikes. Zack stretches his left arm in the target direction that catches the first enemy that it hits. This deals magic damage and slows the enemy by 40%. Hitting an enemy forms a tether between you and the target that lasts for 2 seconds during which the target is revealed. During this tether, Zack's next basic attack is replaced by another stretching strike, gaining bonus attack range, bonus magic damage, and another slow. If both these strikes are on separate targets, both are moved together, slowed, and rooted for a short duration. If these two targets are near each other, they're slammed together and stunned. This is a fantastic form of CC that can get some insane value if used correctly. This along with your E that we'll discuss shortly are both great tools to disrupt enemy carries in teamfights, pull off successful ganks, and lock down key targets from being able to output damage. There are multiple different interactions to learn when it comes to your Q as well. Some examples would be using Q on minions to set up a play in a gank, setting up a multi-man E in close range, flashing to pull off surprise CC, or even using your stretching strike on jungle plants or towers to lock down an unsuspecting target. Also, and very important, is that your Q is an auto attack reset. This means an auto Q auto combo can be pulled off very fast for a burst of damage. Although Zack is pretty simple, knowing how to use stretching strike to its maximum potential is probably the biggest difference I see between a beginner and a master Zack player. Zack's W is called Unstable Matter. Zack's body explodes outward dealing magic damage to all nearby enemies. Unstable Matter's cooldown is also reduced by 1 second every time he picks up a Cell Division chunk, meaning your DPS increases greatly when picking up blobs. This is Zack's most consistent source of DPS, 
and is really what allows him to deal consistent damage over time. This is definitely his most basic, but nonetheless important spell to clear your jungle, take extended fights, and even sustain up while picking up your chunks. Zack's E is called Elastic Slingshot. Zack charges up a channel for 4.5 seconds, increasing the slingshot's range in a cone shape in the target direction. When casted, Zack dashes to the target location, dealing magic damage to all nearby enemies on impact, knocking them up, and stunning them for 0.5 seconds. If Elastic Slingshot was charged for more than 1 second, the CC duration is doubled. If Zack cancels the channel himself, or the charge completes without reactivation, 50% of the health cost and cooldown will be refunded. The channel can be cancelled, so beware casting it mid-fight or near enemies with CC, since this is your main escape tool. This ability is really what makes Zack so unique. It's one of the longest range engages in the entire game that can take advantage of enemy players' mistakes or mispositions. This is also what makes Zack's ganks so scary to play against. Areas where you'd usually be safe against other junglers quickly become extremely dangerous, especially once Zack gets some points into his E. This is because every skill level into your E increases its range, making Zack's ganks scarier every single level. We'll discuss this more in the jungle clear section, but just always remember that early on your E is nowhere near as powerful as it is when it's maxed out. Zack's ultimate is called Let's Bounce. Passively with every point into R, Zack's healing from his chunks increases. When casted, Zack starts bouncing, gaining bonus movement speed, and is unable to basic attack or cast Q or E. Each bounce deals magic damage to all nearby enemies, knocking them back over one second and slowing them. Enemies who are hit by multiple bounces will only receive 50% damage and are no longer knocked back. This spell allows Zack to really dominate teamfights with a ton of AoE damage and CC. In most cases, bouncing around trying to knock up multiple targets is the go-to strategy. You can also use this knockback to strategically push enemies back into your team or away from your carries as peel. Let's Bounce is pretty simple, but understanding all of its use cases will greatly increase the success you have on Zack. Runes Now that we've broken down Zack's kit, let's discuss his optimal rune choices for the current season. For Keystones, first off and by far most common is Aftershock. This defensive rune pairs amazingly with Zack since he has multiple forms of CC to proc it. Since Zack relies on heavily committing into fights, getting that massive boost of resistances when you land makes you even more annoying to deal with than you already are. To close out the Resolve Tree, Font of Life, Conditioning, and Revitalize are the usual options chosen by most players. Unflinching is another solid option if the enemy team is filled with CC, so keep that in mind during champ select. For secondary, Triumph and Legend Tenacity is the most common setup in most elos. When looking at pro and high elo Zac players, most seem to be running Inspiration with Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. Cosmic Insight is an amazing rune all around and is my personal choice when playing Zack. Next, and pretty much the only other keystone option for Zack, would be Conqueror. Although this page is not used very often, I do see it in some games where the enemy team is filled with low damage, tanky champs. Conqueror is actually pretty good since Zack stacks it up very easily with his W. I don't recommend taking this page often, but definitely keep it in mind since it could be strong in the right situation. For rune shards, cooldown reduction, either adaptive force or armor, and then either armor or magic resist depending on the jungle matchup and the team comps is going to be your standard setup. Items. Now let's discuss the best current item builds for Zack. To start, both blue and red smite are viable options depending on the game. Blue smite is the most common choice for the extra lockdown potential, but red smite can work into more bruiser matchups as well. If you get an early 350 gold, picking up a dark seal can be a cheap way to give yourself some massive snowball potential. For boots, Ionian Boots of Lucidity for extra utility, plated steel caps into AD heavy teams, and Merc Treads against heavy CC are going to be your main options. Now for Mythics, Frostfire Gauntlet and Sunfire Aegis are by far the best choices. Frostfire gives you even more utility and sticking power, and is also a very cheap option that works great. If you want some extra tenacity and damage over time, Sunfire Aegis is the go-to choice. Keep in mind that both of these are great, but choosing the right one for your specific game will make a huge difference. Now for core items, Thornmail, Abyssal Mask, Anathema's Chains, and Spirit Visage are the options you're going to be wanting almost every game. Since you have so much CC, Thornmail is amazing into AD teams, 
while Abyssal Mask is a great option into AP. Anathema's Chains is a great choice to shut down a key enemy carry, and Spirit Visage is a perfect choice to give yourself even more sustain against heavy magic damage. When finishing off your build, your goal is to get as tanky as possible versus whatever damage type your opponent has, while also fitting in a bit of damage here and there when possible. Zac also has some solid AP scaling, so fitting in some AP doesn't hurt either. Although you're going to be building tanky, if you get the right build, you can not only tank up a ton, but also deal some serious damage in extended fights. Learning what build is best in each individual game is very important to learn if you want to start seeing some good results on Zac. Jungle Clears Now let's get right into Zac's jungle pathing and some general jungle strategy. First things first is making sure you know how to optimally clear your jungle. To start would be to always use your Q to reset your basic attacks. This is a simple mechanic that will greatly increase your clear speed, especially in the early game. Another tip is to try and use your AoE damage as much as possible to kill multiple camps at once. The best example is to kill Blue and Gromp at the same time, since Zac mainly deals AoE damage, so don't put it to waste. When you're clearing your jungle and planning on making a gank happen right after, be cautious of using your E to farm, since the cooldown is extremely high in the early game. This may seem like a small thing, but can really screw you over if a good opportunity comes up and you can't use your E because it's on cooldown. Speaking of Elastic Slingshot, this ability has some very useful interactions if used in the correct moment. First would be using it to drive by and smite steal Baron or Dragon without putting yourself at risk. Once you find the right angle, you can actually fly past both the Dragon and Baron pit and get in range to smite. This is a very useful trick to keep in mind that can make you look like a baller if pulled off correctly. It's also very important to remember that you can use your Q against minions, jungle plants, towers, epic monsters, and even wards. Keep this in mind during fights since sometimes pulling off a double Q takes some creative thinking to pull off. On the topic of stretching strikes, a cool way to hide the animation is to use W before Q. This quick combo makes your stretching strike way harder to see, which can really catch enemies off guard. Another very cool mechanic is that you can use your Zhonya's during your E flight time and the damage will still go off. This is super niche since Zhonya's is not going to be built very often, but regardless, it's so cool if you can put it to use. Now for jungle clears, the 5 or 6 camp clear into Scuttle is the most standard path most Zac players go for. The reason for this is because Zac actually has a very weak early game and can get punished heavily by strong duelists early on. The goal of these jungle clears is to farm up and get to level 4 as early as you can while avoiding danger. If your verse is a powerful invading jungler such as Kindred or Graves, you can even start leashless on wolves or raptors to hide your starting position. Playing around Zac's weak early couple levels is probably the single most important thing to learn about him so you can scale nicely into level 4 and 5 when you have a much longer E range. With that being said, the 3 camp gank path can still be a viable option if there's a good opportunity for it. This will usually be planned beforehand in champ select since this can be very risky if not pulled off correctly. It's crucial to have this path as an option, but not to force it every game since you'll fall behind if the play doesn't work out. As a final note on jungle clears, Zac is a great setup champion, but is weak in straight up duels in most cases. Keep this in mind as Zac can still be very powerful in 2v2 or 3v3 skirmishes, but will lose most 1v1s. This does not mean that you can't carry. It just means that you need to learn how to properly facilitate your teammates and set your team up for success instead of trying to go for solo kills. Weaknesses Zac's biggest weakness is definitely his early game. Although good Zac players have many strategies to play around this, it can still be difficult to pilot the early game against strong junglers, especially when you have losing lanes. To build on top of this, since Zac is a champion that helps your team shine, having a useless team definitely can make you feel hopeless. Now this is not another excuse to blame your team, it's just important to keep this in mind since playing around the right lanes is insanely important on Zac. You can lose a game solely by playing around the wrong win condition on your team, so keep this fresh in your mind while playing. Another weakness Zac has is fighting into bruiser champions with a ton of sustain such as Fiora, Aatrox, or Viego since they will out sustain your damage with enough items. Building an early Thornmail is a great way to get rid of this weakness since CCing targets will apply a 60% Grievous Wounds effect. Until you have Grievous Wounds or an ally's follow up, it's usually best to avoid fighting these types of champions. Lastly is that engaging on Zac can be very punishing if you misstep, especially in late game scenarios. 
Although Zack has fantastic engage, it's really easy to overcommit and completely int the game. Learning the ins and outs of engaging comes with time, but is a skill that is crucial to master if you want to succeed on the champion. Strengths. Now with the negatives out of the way, let's get into the things that make Zack an amazing jungler. Firstly is that Zack has an insane amount of CC, and not only that, but this CC consists mainly of knockups, which is the best kind of crowd control in the game. The reason for this is because tenacity does not affect knockups, meaning that most of Zack's CC cannot be reduced regardless of items and runes. Next is that Zack is one of the best ganking junglers in the entire game. Once you get some points into E, Zack can pull off ganks from angles most laners will not expect at all. Learning all the creative gank angles over walls and out of vision is one of the most important things when mastering Zack. To build on top of this is how low mobility champions are really not able to play the game against Zack. The worst feeling in the world is playing an immobile champion like Aphelios and getting permacamped by a Zack. You'll be second guessing yourself every time you go up for a CS since a Zack can come flying in from a mile away. This not only goes for ganking, but also for finding flank angles in mid to late game teamfight scenarios. Zack engaging on your carries from out of vision can be extremely dangerous and can turn a game around in an instant. Playing around vision and creative angles is a common theme between the best Zack players and cannot be understated. Lastly is that Zack is pretty much always useful in teamfights and provides so much utility to his team. Although you're not going to be walking around assassinating enemies, Zack's AoE CC and damage cannot be underestimated. You really learn how strong Zack can be when you're trying to play a hyper carry and you get chain CC'd for 5 seconds into death with almost no counterplay. Zack is an extremely unique engage tank with a playstyle that can't really be compared to any other champion. If you're looking to pick up a fun tank champ who can have a massive impact on the map, Zack is definitely the pick for you. That will do it for my in-depth guide on Zack Jungle. If you want to support my future content, make sure you subscribe to the channel for future uploads. Most people who watch are not subbed and any extra support I can get really helps. If you have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll be giving away free coaching sessions every month to members of the Discord, so be sure to click the link in the description if you're interested. With all that being said, thanks again for watching. Until the next video, peace out.